In other news, the New Zealand government has just given $10 million to a Fijian project to make crop seeds in the Pacific more resilient to climate change. Climate is the main concern for Pacific nations and New Zealand hopes that boosting climate funding might counter China's creeping influence in the region. Climate correspondent Isabel Ewing is at the Pacific Islands Forum in Suva. The region's instability could be forgotten momentarily in the warmth of the Pacific welcome. But reminders of the fractures in Pacific unity plain to see, like Kiribati's empty seat. Forum Secretary General Henry Puna hinting at the tensions. Our region remains in a precarious position, both in the short and in the long term. Jacinda Ardern relishing face-to-face -face time with fellow leaders after three years of Zoom diplomacy and the chance to show her climate change chops, the first chunk of a $1.3 billion aid fund. Support for a lab developing plant varieties more resistant to changing rainfall patterns and coastal flooding. You are literally our Noah's Ark. And that is so important to us as a region uh, when we are so reliant, of course, on our ability to provide our own food security. Because taking the Pacific's biggest threat seriously is a way Australia and New Zealand might keep the spectre of China at bay. Both countries will be need, to, need to be taking real action on climate change. Jacinda Ardern getting in before Anthony Albanese with this $10 million climate aid announcement, but word is she might be gazumped by her Aussie counterpart in the coming days, looking to make up for a lack of ambition. I expect that uh, the new Australian government will come to this Pacific Islands Forum with new announcements for support for the Pacific. There's one area where I think the world would welcome some healthy competition between New Zealand and Australia, um, and I imagine that would be, uh, would be our climate action. Ardern and the Aussies showing up after a three-year hiatus to say we're here and we're not telling you what to do. Members of the Pacific family uh, are capable of providing that security. Pacific unity is important as we navigate a world where we confront climate, COVID uh, and uh, strategic competition. In China we have an example of a development partner who's been around the Pacific for decades but is certainly increasing their activity and changing the way in which they engage. Hoping this boost to the threat lapping at the Pacific's doorstep will reset the relationship away from Beijing. And Isabel joins us now live from Suva. And Isabel, US Vice President Kamala Harris will address the forum tomorrow. Yes, Mike, well, she will beam in virtually, but it is unprecedented in terms of it being believed to be the first time a US Vice President has been actually involved in the Pacific Island Forum program. Normally, the non-member nations catch up with the leaders afterwards. And this announcement from the, the White House, of course, comes hot on the heels of Kiribati pulling out of the forum, a country which is known to have close diplomatic ties with China. Now, when you consider that China doesn't have a presence here in Suva, whereas the US has been given a platform to give a speech to those in attendance, that certainly feels like a win for the US in this geopolitical competition which is ongoing. Now, it's understood that one of the topics Kamala Harris will cover tomorrow is the South Pacific Tuna Treaty, which allows the US to legally fish for tuna in Pacific waters. That's been renegotiated and it's understood uh, the expectation is that the result of that will be a better, more generous result for the Pacific nations. So just the latest development in the the scramble between the superpowers for influence in the Pacific and we'll know more about that once Kamala Harris does give that speech tomorrow morning. Climate correspondent Isabel Ewing, thank you.